Hi, Floss Two. Uh, happy Thursday. I believe it's June nineteenth. Um, this is Helen D. Thank you for joining me. We are on take two. My first video died mid video and went kaput. Can't find it, so now I'm using my husband's phone, which I'm not used to, um, and it looks a little dark. But a dark video is better than no video at all. So I reset everything up. Um, to go through that again. Fingers crossed, the second time is the charm. Um, this is our last week of school, so I was trying to get a video in before the end of the school year. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'll be doing videos over the summer, it just might not be quite as um, regular. It might be every three weeks, or it might be every, you know, one, one week and then one the next, depending on what we're doing and what I have to show. So, um, Almost summer. Our school year is done this Friday, the 21st. Um, we start after Labor Day and we had six snow days. So this is, this is about when we usually get out. Last year we got out on the 25th. So um, we'll take the 21st. We don't have much planned this summer. Um, we will be going down to Washington, D.C. Um, for like a long weekend, four day weekend. My husband's sister is there. And his mom is meeting us there, so we're planning on hitting all the highlights in four days. We've been before with my son, so he doesn't remember it. I think he was four, we decided, the last time. The last time we went was deep in his dinosaur phase. And it was right before they were closing the dinosaur exhibit at the Smithsonian to do the cleaning and the rearranging. That was going to take five years. Well, guess what? They've just opened him back up, so that's just a coincidence. He is no longer deep in his dinosaur phase. Now he's in his cat phase, um, but he's still excited to see them. And we'll go see the zoo um, again, which he's been to, but he doesn't remember. Um, and I think we'll see some of the monuments and stuff this year, too. He didn't really, he was too young before to care about that, so I think we'll go see that as well. Um, and then he has a week of camp over the summer. But other than that, we'll kind of just be hanging out, killing time. So, it feels weird doing a take two. I don't usually, usually I muddle through, but this was a complete, complete loss. Um, I had written things down and I couldn't find my notes, so I kind of just stacked things in the order in which they happened. So that's how we'll go through them. So I started off, I had an FFO, um, a back from the framer, this is um, Courage by Sarif on Etsy. Um, this was a Mania start and a Mania finish, and it fits in an 8x10 frame. So I stretched it, pinned it, laced it. Um, we have a local guy, so I took it over to him, and he, as I'm sure a lot of framers do, if they have leftovers, um, he makes standard size frames and then discounts them because he's trying to use up supply. So I found this one that has some blue on it, which matched, matched perfect. Um, I dropped it off on a Wednesday. He called me on Thursday and it was done. So because he didn't need to make the frame, he didn't need to lace it. He didn't need to cut the glass like it was a standard size glass. Um, that went really fast. So that is up on the nerve ball. Um, I've had a lot of new subscribers. Thank you. Some of you have never seen the nerve ball. So I thought I would do a little video of the nerd wall. Um, I, I'm going to do it as a separate video because I don't want to have to edit. <laughs> so now I'm doing take two. So we'll see what happens. But I thought if I did it separately, it would upload faster. So that's still the plan. Um, I'll just do that separately and upload it. So I finished. Yeah, I have that finished. Last time I talked to you, I was working on two patriotic pieces, and I wanted to get those done and then move back on to some things I started before Mania. So the first one is um, a Bluebirds Salute. This is by Luminous Fiber Arts. It's with the call for colors on a little scrap of the blue. Um, 16 count, I think. So I need to figure out a way to finish that. And then the other one I was doing is finished and fully finished. That was Where Liberty Dwells. 
by Brenda Gervais. And when I was going through to see what I could finish, I had this little easel um, from Michael's, one of their standard easels. And I had, because I had left the words off, I'm at pick perfect. So I put a little fabric behind it, did a little bow with a covered button. Um, this is also on the balloon with the called, and with most of the called four colors. Um, the stars are supposed to be two shades, but the lighter shade was not showing up in my fabric. And no matter what I tried, it was not showing up in my fabric. So I just used the called for of the outsides and filled it in. And then I had, this was like, I think this is um, 3865. Again, the called for just blended. It was more of an ecru and it just didn't show up. So this one is done and up for 4th of July. Um, in my last video, over the place today. Thank you for all the love for the nautical um, prairie schooler finishes that I did. I, hadn't, I did not expect those to be so popular. Um, in that video, someone had asked if I would show the patriotic stuff behind me. So I only have two things up there right now. One of them is um, Heart and Hand, Land That I Love, and I just showed that finish a couple videos ago. And then this one is a Lizzie Kate. It might be called Liberty. I'm not sure. It was from a couple years ago. Um, and this is a little frame I found at TJ Maxx and the flowers all on it. And it's a clip frame. So I just clipped it on. And that's back there. Um, so this ribbon, I made that bow before Christy Jab Girl Stitches did her awesome bow tutorial. So if you're finishing your own things and bows are not your specialty, bows are not my specialty. <laughs> um, Christy just posted a couple yesterday, maybe even the day before. She posted a really good video on how to make like three or four different types of bows. Um, very easy to follow. So that one I kind of meandered on my own, but now that I've watched her video and seen like how she does them, um, I'm feeling a lot more confident about my bow making skills. So I did put her bow making to work in my next FFO. Um, after I finished the Patriotics, I went back to Weatherwise. This was my start for April of Very Prairie Year South. Um, so I pulled this back out and I was doing this top one and I converted all the colors because I wanted to make it a little more New england -y. Um, I didn't even pull the originals and then match them up. I just looked at the picture and I said, I need a dark green and I need a light green. And what color should the sunrise be or the sunset? I had picked some colors for that and they were too orange. So I changed them out. So it was kind of hit or miss until I got what I thought worked. I posted a picture on my Instagram yesterday um, and I posted all the floss I used. And I'll list them below um, for people who don't have Instagram. So I'll list those out and they're all standard company. They're classic color works in Gentle R and Weeks and DMC. There's nothing that might be like a limited edition that you shouldn't be able to get. Dye lots change, they might not look exactly the same, um, but they're all kind of standard floss. So I finished that, and then I had a dentist appointment yesterday, and after my dentist appointment, I thought, well, I'll just go to Joanne's and see if they have anything. Um, I had looked through my stuff, my finishing stuff, and I found this um, piece to finish it on that I'd had for like a year. Um, Elizabeth at Vintage Stitches had done a piece on this. And it came from Michael's and I went out and got it and it's been sitting there unused. Now it's used, Elizabeth. So here's what I'm talking about. So it's got like these buckets and kind of a chicken wire and some birds on the top. And there's my finish. Now I can't really tell lighting wise what we're doing here. So there's all the colors that I changed. Um, this house, so much trouble. I originally wanted it blue, but it wasn't showing up enough. And I tried like four or five different blues and I picked out four or five different blues. And finally I'm like, forget it. It's going to be white. 
And then I gave it gray shutters because this moon up in the corner on the original chart is black and I didn't want it black. So I thought if I use the gray for the moon and the gray for the shutters, um, then it would just match. So there's mine. They had all these flowers at Joanne's on clearance. They were spring flowers and they matched perfect. And I didn't think it's like this. It's rhubarb. It's gentle art rhubarb, and it's this salmony pinkish. I thought I'd have a hard time matching it, but it's done. I have it hanging up downstairs, and I'll leave it up spring and summer, and then I'll see if I can find something fallish. That might take another year, but I'll see if I can find something to put on there um, so that I can leave it up year-round. Although I have more Christmas and fall decorations, and... They might already be using that space that I have it, so we'll see. This chart is out of print. Um, Hoffman's been redistributing, so if you're interested in it, I would say contact Hoffman and ask if they'll reprint. And I think they really do listen to what people ask for. Like I know when Misty and I did um, Happy Christmas last year, I think they had a lot of requests. And, and um, was it Joan? I think Joan did it. Or Kelly, might have been Kelly. Uh, quite a few people ended up working on that piece, and now it's been re-released. So they probably have a schedule for what they're re-releasing, but I really think they listen to what the people want. Um, so I would suggest dropping them an email and kind of letting them know if you're interested. So I finished that, uh, and then I am... Um, trying to decide what to do next and I was being called to work on tingles so I'm doing them as the one big piece the Lizzie Kate tingles on picture this plus doubloon <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the original piece that all those scraps keep coming from because I cut just a long skinny piece um so I worked on Double Double. I finished it this morning. So that one is done. So that was one, two, three, the eighth. So I have four more to go. I have been doing these trying to do one or two a month to get it done for Halloween. If I worked on this, just, just this, I could finish this within like two weeks. Um, but I got some other stuff I need to work on. So we'll see. But I definitely want to have this done and finished. For this Halloween. I'm feeling I'm feeling behind and I know I shouldn't be feeling behind it's not a race or anything but I'm feeling like I set some goals for myself and I'm not there and I don't know if it's because I did mania and I wasn't originally planning on doing mania and because of that I didn't work on a lot of things um, like the Bent Creek Rose I have two done <sighs> I'd like to get summer, fall, and winter done this year, but that might not happen. Um, and the monthlies, the hands-on design celebration series, year of celebrations, I think I started May. Didn't get May done. Didn't start June. Not ready for July. Um, so I need to do some catching up on those. Christmas ornaments I usually make for my son and my nieces and nephews and my best friend's two kids. I haven't started those. So I have some things that need my attention. We'll see what I get to over the summer. I do have some haul. Last, last time I think I had one piece of haul. Now I have more, I have more haul than that. This week, uh, and two of the orders that I placed, I was looking for something specific and they had it. And it was um, both companies I'd never ordered from before. So the first thing, I think I mentioned this last time, I made an order with the Daily Stitcher. She got in um, the new hands-on design charts. So I got Star Spangled Swine. This will not get done this year, but when it does, I'll start with this. I may do like just a truck next year. And then the other, the next three, Scary Apothecary. This is another series that I would love to have done for Halloween. They're not that big. They don't take that long. I have one done. There's nine. So I'd like to at least start one of those pretty soon. 
Um, so I placed orders from Fat Quarter Shop um, and Cobweb Corner. Um, Fat Quarter Shop, you've probably heard of. <laughs> They've been around a lot lately. Um, they had hands-on design. Here's the skinny on Christmas. I was looking for this one and the Halloween one, and they have the Christmas one. Can't even tell if that is focused. And they also had hands-on design Christmas triplets, which I really liked. I am I'm not doing Jolly July. If I'm feeling behind now, I can only imagine how I would be feeling if I started 31 ornaments. Um, I should start some ornaments just to get them done. I'm not doing that many. So Cob of Corner, they have a lot of charts, like older charts, sometimes that are hard to find. Um, I don't know where she gets them from, but she had the Halloween one. I have the Halloween medley by Heart and Hand, which Chelsea is stitching, but I just really liked this one and, I, and the Christmas one. And that way they're the same size. I can finish them the same. Cynthia Brew, Cynthia Brew Creates, Stitch Leggy Swimmer, and I love her. She's small. She won't take that long. You can stick your little bathing suit in whatever color you want. Um, and they had her, so I picked her up and then two... Prairie Schoolers, um, Billy Goat Scruff, three Billy Goat Scruff. I won't do this whole thing, but I've seen someone do just these goats, just these goats, just these goats on the back. I thought they'd be cute for like bowl fillers. So I picked up that and um, Reindeer Roundup. This one, I love this chart. The first thing I probably do will be the, the two little bonus ornaments. I really like all these reindeer sitting around. If I do, and I should, um, a June start for prairie, very prairie year, there's no rules. Nothing says I have to, but I should, and it may be that little chart. So that is my haul. plans. Um, I don't know. I can't decide what to work on right now. Um, I've got so much started. I don't know if I want to just see what's closest to being finished and check some things off that way. Um, I need to figure out my prayer schooler starts for June, which might be that ornament, and then July, which should be the next of the prairie seasons charts. I'm skipping summer. I'm going right to autumn because I have a better chance of getting it done for autumn. Um, summer row. I don't know if I want to start more things or finish things. One thing I do know I'm starting, but not till August, is um, Jackie, across my stitches, is doing a stitch along out of this um, Renato Parolin book, which we got on Amazon. So I need to decide which one of these to do. And she's doing these squirrels, which I love, and I might do these squirrels too. Jackie's got good taste. So it's these like, they're double squirrels. And it's fairly small. One twenty nine by 92, uh, monochromatic. I know I probably have a piece of the bloom kicking around I could use for that. Um, or it might be what some of the owls. She, he's got some really nice owl designs. So that's August 1st. So that gives me the whole month of July to figure out what I want to work on until then. What I want to finish up. Um, I think that's it. Stitching related wise. I hope everyone has fun at StitchCon. All 400 of you. Um, that's too many people for me, but I'm excited for everyone who's going. I have friends that are going. I can't wait to hear about it. I'm sure everyone's going to have a great time. Um, like I said, we've got our little trip and just a couple things over the summer. So it should be pretty low-key. Um, some summers I have a lot of time. Some summers I don't. And I never quite know <laughs> until it's happening. So... We'll see what it's going to be. Um, the last thing I want to show, and it's not stitching related, so have a nice 
afternoon, morning, evening, week, if you're just here for the stitching. It's just one quick thing. I had looked into getting something for my son for the summer. Um, he's a huge reader. My son is nine, but he's reading like way older than nine books. And he reads a lot. Um, he'll just devour through a book if he can. So I looked at some of the subscription, like the book subscriptions, like dust in my eye. And I decided to try um, Owl Crate Jr. There's other ones out there. This is just the one I went with. And I ended up doing, um, you can do a one time, you can do a month to month, you can give someone a gift. So I ended up with him getting him a three month subscription to kind of get through the summer. So it was June, July, and August. The first one just came and that's what I'm going to show you. Um, but I just want to tell you a little about it in case you're interested. I know a lot of us are readers, have kids, have grandkids. Um, so it, it's like, I think it's $30 plus shipping. And the shipping is a little high because it's a big box with a heavy book in it. So I think it was like eight bucks. They always have coupon codes. They were having a 20% off. I think it's still going on. A 20% off of the three or a six month subscription. So that's the one I used. Um, but they're always having codes. So you get this box once a month. It has at least one book and then a bunch of like book stuff, some book stuff. So they give you like a little preview thing of what the book is. If you're interested in finding out what the book is, so you know if it's one that you'd be interested in, pretty easy to figure out. Like they give you a pretty good description that if you Google it enough, all of their books they try and have be like released within the last 45 days. So it's pretty easy to figure out what the book is. If you look and you say, that's not really a book I think I'm going to read. Like if the next book in the kids one were like a scary book, he's not going to read that. You can skip a month. Even on the three to six month plan, you just contact them and say, you know, I'd like to skip the next month. Boop, skip the next month. So the last month, our first was time travel. And it came the other day, so here's what was in his box. So the book itself was called Time Sight. Um, and it looks really good. It's like a historical fiction. Um, he was really excited. Actually, he was really excited to get the box, so that was good. So that's the book. I had like a little newsletter, a little card explaining what's in the box, a magnet based on the book. Um, Every box, I think, for the kids has like a little patch that they can collect. It has a little pin, this is the time travel pin. This one had, um, it's stuck together. It's a time turner from Hermione and um, Harry Potter. It's a magnetic brooch, brooch. Dude, it's a needle minder. It's already got my stuff on it, right? This has got some serious magnet on it. So it's the good kind that won't mess up your stitching. And then the bag, double magnet. So if I put that on something, it's not going anywhere. Um, he has it for now. He hasn't read these books yet, so that may end up migrating toward my side. Um, this box had this really cool dinosaur zipper pouch in it. Um, and it's like, it's not leather, it's fake leather. And then it had a Professor Noggins game, like the full game. So that was this month's box. And then it gives you a card to say what next month's is, which is Zodiac Adventure. Again, it has like a blurb of what the book is. I looked it up. He's going to love this book. Like the time travel book, he'll like, he's going to love this book. <laughs> um... So we're excited for that. So that was the junior. I also signed up for me to try out the regular Owl Crate. And this month's theme was Libraries of Wonder. And I haven't got it yet to see what's in it. But in doing a bunch of Owl Crate looking since I signed up, the July box comes out for pre-order Thursday the 20th. So tomorrow, if you're watching this, the day I upload it. They have been doing a series of really cool Harry Potter mugs 
and they did announce that the next mug will be in that box. Um, I'm month to month, so I just won't skip that month and I should be okay. If it's something you're interested in, I would, I would, I would pick one up pretty quick. They're on sale, like I said, to, uh, the 20th, I think in the evening. They're in Oregon. All the cool people are in Oregon. I'm in the wrong Portland. I'm not even in Portland, but I'm by the wrong Portland. Um, I will put a link to Owl Crate down below. Um, they do have a referral program. So if you're signing up, you might as well help someone out. And I'll put the coupon code down there too, um, if it's still active. That's it. That's all my stitching. That's all my extra. Um, I'll go see how long this takes to upload. Give my husband his phone back. See if we can figure out what's wrong with mine. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of my short afternoon and then the rest of the um, school year. Hope you all have a great beginning of your vacation. I know most of you are already into it. Um, and I know everyone's busy or over summer. So we will talk when we'll talk. Bye, guys.